Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and welcome back to another episode of our beautiful winter painting together. Now, last time you guys voted to do a large mountain with a little creek running through it, but you almost voted for a farm. It was really, really close. So what I'm gonna do is at the end of this episode, I'll give you a chance to vote for a small farm. And I think we can work it in if you guys want to. So let me know. All right, let's get started. Now, as you can see here, I've already started a basic sketch outline of the mountain. And we're gonna go ahead and fill it in now with some soft gray. See, look, I got on my palette here, a little soft gray, a little red maybe in with it. And of course my palette's very dirty. I was painting, actually painting mountains, as funny as that is, earlier today. So you guys have a mountain week <laughs> there, but that's all right, it should be fun. So anyways, I've kind of got this, you know, this subtle gray, kind of a charcoal blue gray. Now, see, here's the thought. And I, this is kind of different. We don't normally do this, and I'm kind of glad that it started this way. We've got this really pretty, it's not like a nighttime scene, but it kind of is, you know, very, very nice evening scene, maybe something like that. So I want to keep those pretty pink colors kind of flowing through the whole painting, right? You want, we want the painting to feel really nice and kind of, kind of warm. And it's just a good painting, a good winter painting, so. I'm gonna work on, work on kind of keeping some of that. And the point, the reason I'm saying that is I, I was very careful to keep a little bit of pink. All those words, just to say, I was trying to be careful to leave some pink. There. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull straight down here to create a little bit of that, that winding river. Now, obviously this bottom part is dry. In fact, you can't even hardly tell where the mountain stops and, and this color we put in last week begins. And that's fine. What we're going to do is we're just going to have to paint a little more slowly. You see, you've got to apply the paint over and over and over and over again. And then you kind of swish it back and forth like this. And that kind of gives you the same effect that you would get on a wet canvas. Obviously, I'm kind of partial to the wet canvases. I'm, actually, I really am. Especially after that, that big painting, you know, it really, <laughs> really reminded me how much I like the, the wet canvases. So this is a little, takes a little more time, that's for sure. Oops green in there won't hurt anything there okay so I'm just gonna continue with this and as we go back maybe just see I'm just getting a little smaller getting a little smaller maybe wind it right around the corner and then let it vanish behind behind a forest or something back there good maybe let's yeah let's wind this actually way over here and bring it way back this is cool and we'll make all that work and make sense in a minute or maybe later, maybe not even in this episode. <laughs> there we go. Isn't that pretty? Very soft. Now, while we're going here, and as you can see, I've just put a little red into this, just to keep the pink kind of going throughout. I, I need to really think about our, uh, our, where our land is gonna start. So there's about half, so it's just under half. This is where our snow is gonna meet the mountain, at least here at the bottom. Obviously, it doesn't have to be perfect. And if we do our little village, it'll be back there. I'm gonna go ahead and drop in with our little detail round and some tinted white, not just pure. I'm gonna drop in some highlight up here. So you see, I just actually had to get some more white out and then I just tinted it with a little red, little yellow. And what this simply does for us is gives us a nice soft color that we can highlight with, something that's not so cold or harsh as pure white would be. Oh yes, isn't that neat? Huh, I love it. This is cool. Now, so here's the thought. We, we know we have a pretty strong light source and maybe it's kind of coming through the mountain like this. So that'll really bring this one forward, push that one back. And that would be kind of cool. You kind of have to, kind of have to think about the light and how it will interact with your objects before you just jump in and start throwing a lot of paint down. So that's what I'm doing. I've got to make sure that I get this right for you. <laughs> Yikes. Yes, that's gonna be, it's gonna be nice. So here's my thought. Let's let this be a little more fuzzy so that we kind of concentrate some light burning through this area, right? Wouldn't that be cool? Let's do that. This, I'm just doing as, as much as I can to kind of make it a, a different mountain scene. It's something that's not so normal because this sky is not normal. So I feel like we just gotta do something that's a little different. And by kind of focusing this light in a very unusual way. I think we'll get some interesting effects here. 
Now what we can do is really increase the detail on this mountain. You remember we did touch in a little bit of blue, but now let's add more. This color is a little lighter than that blue, but it's, it's significantly obviously darker than the, than the highlight. There. So it's almost a mid-tone. There you go. It's a mid-tone. And I like it. There. What this is going to do is help us shape, shape this mountain without having to highlight the face or the back. I guess this is the back of the mountain. The face we can't see. All we can see is the, the light spilling over the top. There. And if, if you were to highlight this, you know, with big, broad areas, I think that what would happen was we would, we would end up losing our, our beautiful absolutely beautiful lighting situation. So whatever we do in this painting, I do not want to lose that. That would be kind of disappointing <laughs> there. So if no matter, you know, the trees, whatever we do, we want to work at trying to keep this lighting just the way we have it. It's really pretty there. So this way we don't have a blank mountain and look, you can, you're not locked in here. You can do extra things, but just keep them subtle. Now the last thing we're going to do, here today, at least, is, is just toss in a little dark line. The reason is, I think will help us, not, not so much in the painting, I could do this, you know, at any time. I think it'll help us visually see where that river flows and just, you know, helps to plan our painting. That's my hope. There, so I'm gonna just toss it right in, you know, before we end. So this way, you kind of have a better idea. You can see very clearly where the river is. It may not even be perfectly done today. In fact, it probably won't. We'll probably have to go back and mess with it a little bit. At least you get an idea of where that river is. You know, there we go. And on, of course you go, you don't want to go along the same line. You actually change. You always do it to the top line. Does that make sense? There. Perfect. And then of course, as you go around the corner, then it just disappears. And then this one picks up on that side. All right. And then over here, goes all the way back and then comes out. Subtle, but I think it helps. So now it's your turn to vote. So of course the first option that we have here is a little bit of maybe a distant village. We could do two or three houses, but you know, just a few brush strokes. Or we could turn this whole thing into a lot of mountains, even coming up closer with a lot of rocks in the foreground. Or over on the left hand side here, we can add a lot of beautiful layers of forest and make a lot of detail and interest that way. All right, well, that's about all we're going to do on our little winter painting today. Now it's your turn to go to the website and vote for how you'd like to see this painting continue. Thanks for watching.